Boy, am I excited. Today we're getting into a subject that really, really, really fits my gifts in the Spirit. We're talking about demons need a host body. What is a demon? I mean, are there really demons? Well, you know, I think about a demon like I think about a virus. When a virus is floating around in the air, it doesn't bother you. But when it gets into your body, it raises havoc. Well, if a demon's floating around in the air, it don't bother you. But when it gets into you, well, let's let maybe get, go back to the beginning. You know, back before uh, the the beginning of the earth, the creation of the earth, the earth was without form, dark and without form. Now, I hope you've wa watched Patricia's last video about the light of life because you'll understand a little more about what I'm talking about. But before that the time that light appeared, the adversary had been cast out of heaven down to the earth, and he controlled the earth. And then light showed up. And when light showed up, guess what? Everything started to change. But the light wasn't the sun, and the light wasn't the stars and the moon. They weren't created till the fourth day. But go back to Patricia's video and watch that. And now we're going to get into where I want to go with you. Well, there's hierarchies in both the good and the bad of the spirit world. And the hierarchy in the good is Yahweh, the creator of the universe. And under Yahweh is the uh, mighty archangels. And along with them is the adversary. So the adversary is not at the top level, he's at the second level. And underneath Michael and Gabriel and all those fellas, there's another level. And underneath them, there's another level, and so it goes. Well, that's the same on both sides. We had the, the Yahweh at the top, and then we have the angels and archangels, and then we have the adversary. Well, the adversary was thrown to earth, and he controlled the planet. And then Papa came along, Father God, Yahweh, and he decided he was going to put man here. And then he gave man the authority over the earth. Well, the God of this world was the adversary. And all of a sudden, he's got somebody that he has to live here with. Well, the adversary didn't like that. As a matter of fact, he's hated humanity from day one. He's hated us. So, so Adam and Eve were in a perfect place. They, they, actually, they, were, they, they, they had immortality. They, they would not never have died because they were in this in the spirit realm with father but they did something wrong they they uh, disobeyed they disobeyed the only rule that they weren't supposed to disobey and sin came into to, to the world then they had kids and they had two boys and what happened one of them killed the other one well that was the beginning so time went on and generations were born but 20 of the angels decided that these, these good-looking women, they wanted some of those good-looking women. So they decided they were going to leave the angelic realm. They were going to come down here to the earth realm. And they were going to breed with these women. And they did. And they created offspring that were hybrid. They were half-breeds. Half they were half-angel. And they were half-human. And the word, world really got bad. And Father said... I'm done. I'm going to end this. I'm just going to get rid of everything. But then he looked down and he had made certain promises. And Enoch, Enoch, the seventh from, from Adam, he was a man that never died. He translated right into heaven. But Enoch had a son named Methuselah. Methuselah was the longest living man in the history of the Bible. And then Methuselah had a son named Lamech. And Lamech had a son named Noah. And Noah, of course we know Noah built the big ark, and he was the, Noah and his three sons and his daughters, the daughter-in-laws, were the only ones that survived because the earth was so bad and so corrupt. Well, when the, when the Nephilim offspring died, they couldn't go to heaven. They couldn't go. So they got stuck down here. And they became the demonic forces that we have today. Well, I'm going to get into this a whole lot. As a matter of fact, in the last few days, I've spent several days writing this 12-page this document, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing. 
but I just want to get some simple points to you because there's a lot of things that you need to know. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, there's no demons today. Well, hey, you know what the biggest lie of Satan is? There's no devil today. That's his biggest lie. And people say, well, there's no devil. There's no hell. There's no heaven. Well, that's a lie. And you know what happens? They never open their mind up to realize if you look up in the, in the heavens, you look at the trees, you look at the plants, I mean, how can there be not, not have been a designer of all of this? How can it not have been designed? You look at man. Was man designed? I mean, you know, it, did he come out of a, of, of a microbe in the ocean and turn into a monkey? No, he didn't do that. Not at all. No, no. That didn't happen. However, we live in a spirit world. So the spirits are here and we're here. Are there ever spirits come into our house? Absolutely. I throw them out, tell them, get out. They, they don't belong here. But we've been taught that once you become a Christian, spirits can't live in you. That's an absolute lie. I'm going to prove it to you. You sick? You got cancer? You know anybody does? You know anybody's got diabetes? You know anybody's got a cold? They're spirits of infirmity. They're spirits. There was this woman one time, and she had an issue of blood for 12 years. She said, if I could only touch the hem of his garment, it would go away. She touched the hem of his garment, and it left. It was a spirit. Now, if you go, if you go to Patricia's, my wife's website, drpatricia.com, and go to her books, because she gives them away free, click on the little books tab. There's a book, Heaven or Hell. She, she tells her whole story about the cancer that she had, and the women that laid hands on her, and that spirit left and the cancer left with it. Disease has spirits connected to it. But they can't be in a Christian body. Are you a Christian you're sick? Well, you just blew that one. That didn't work, did it? Well, you know, we spend a lot of our time. Well, let me, let me take you back a little bit. 44 years ago, I had a contract on my life. And I deserved it. But the guy was so mad at me, he came to me on a Friday. He said, you got two weeks to live. You're not going to know if it's a he or a she. They hit, he put a hit on me. Was I afraid? Absolutely I was. I wasn't crazy. I mean, I knew I was in a bad place. But my mom talked about God all the time. And I thought, man, if there's a God, I better get to know him before I go. So I went looking. That was on Friday. Sunday, I was in this little church in Spring Valley in Washington, D.C. And I went in and I, I wanted to, if there was God, I wanted to meet him. And all they talked about was the daggum spaghetti dinner. And how they had to raise money for this church. And I was ticked. I was ticked. And I left that church that morning. And I was, I was not a happy camper. I wanted to find God if there was one. I never heard his name mentioned at all. Well, that Wednesday in the mail, you know, when I went in, I signed this little thing when you go into the work, put your name and address in there. Wednesday, I got a letter from them. I thought, boy, they're going to tell me about God. Not, wrong answer, but spaghetti dinner. Well, I was really ticked. Well, there was this guy in the office. I was selling real estate at the time. And there was this guy in the office, a great big guy, always carrying a Bible. And I was so mad. I went into his office. I slammed that damn daggum letter on his desk. I said, all you Christians are is about, a bunch of, is about, is about money. You guys suck. And I was ticked. I walked back in my office. Pretty soon he come busting in my office. He said, you punk. You don't have enough hair on your backside to go to church with me Sunday. Well, that was the challenge I needed. I was the first one in the parking lot that Sunday. And I went into that, that, that building. It was an elementary school in Vienna, Virginia. I went in that building, and he wasn't anywhere to be found. I thought, oh, well, I got stood up. I'm leaving. So I was heading for the door, and, and he came with his wife and his daughter. He said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to the bathroom. I lied like a rug. I was just a lying dog. I went in the bathroom and flushed the toilet and came back out and sat down. He had me sitting right next to the aisle, and he was sitting next to me. He was a big guy. I mean, he must have been 6'4", and he probably weighed 250. And he wasn't, a, he wasn't somebody you push around. Anyway, so the service started going on, and I was so nervous, I started picking up the bulletins, and I, I had them all wadded up in a ball in my hand. And there I was, and I was perspiring like a stuck pig. And all of a sudden, I don't even know what the preacher said. I have no idea. But this Al, Al Johnson leaned over to me and said, You want to give your life to God? I said, Yes. He picked me up by my shoulders, set me in the aisle, and down the aisle we went. We got down to the front of that, that little group in that elementary school cafeteria, whatever it was. And he, he said, I want you to pray. I know what he's talking about. I know what prayer was. He said, well, just 
follow what I say. So I said, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. I repent. Lord, I don't want to do that anymore. And I gave my life to Christ. And then he said, we're not done yet. Say, Jesus, baptize me in your Holy Spirit. And bam, I got it all. I got it all. You know what happened? I started bawling like a baby. And I was tough. You, you know, I had Coke bottles busting my head open. I got, I, I got mugged in 1968. I was tough. You couldn't make me cry. You could, you could stick a knife in my shoulder. I wouldn't cry. And I was bawling like a baby because I got set free. Well, in that congregation, there was a little old guy named Al Vedetta. And Al Vedetta, a little tiny guy. I mean, I'm 5'6". He was probably 5 foot. A little tiny guy. Probably, probably in his 80s at that time. And I was at that time, I was, what, 28? He was in his 80s. And he couldn't read and write, but he could pick up a Bible and read every word. And he would go into insane asylums, and he'd empty those places. He'd empty them, and they wouldn't let him come back. He wasn't allowed to come back. He went from state to state where they'd let him in. He went in and emptied those places because he cast out spirits. Well, I sat under his tutelage for just a little bit, and I have one big regret today. I wish I'd, I wish I'd spent more and more time with Al because it was just an amazing experience. Anyway, so he told me about a lot of things, and several, a couple of years later, I was, I was running a Christian bookstore in Radford, Virginia, and the spirit of death showed up in the hallway in the trailer I was living in. Now, the people owned the bookstore and uh, had a trailer in the backyard, and I was living in that. And the spirit of death showed up, and I was petrified. And all I could say was, Jesus, 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 for about three hours until sunlight came up, and that was the end of it. Because I didn't know where I was yet. But I didn't realize that I was being directed into that world, that world of the spirits. I didn't know that. You know, it's, what's really interesting the people in Africa are light years ahead of us over here. The Native Americans are light years ahead of us over here. Do you know why? Because they're, they're, more, they're more receptive, more connected to the spirit world. If a spirit came in and knocked you off your chair, you wouldn't know what it was. But they would because they're connected to that world. And I could tell you lots of stories about Patricia and I praying with people and seeing phenomenal changes, but not because of us, because all we are is mouse. He's the spirit that works through us. So we're a body, okay? We're a body. How many spirits can live in a body? Well, we know that there was this one guy that had over 2,000 spirits in his body, and Yeshua, Jesus, cast him into a bunch of pigs, and they ran down off a cliff, and they drowned. So a body can have a lot of spirits in it, right? Well, it's got one spirit, and it's got, it's got your spirit, right? I got my spirit in my body. And then I invited Holy Spirit into my body, and with Holy Spirit came Yeshua and Father. So th now there's four, right? Was there any more spirits in there? Well, I promise you there are. Because I inherited some. I inherited one. I didn't even know I had it till I was 65 years old. It was the spirit of Jezebel. I controlled everything. It was a spirit of control. And I controlled everything. But an apostle and a friend of mine, a, a evangelist, they saw it in me one day. And that day, I went, to, I went to a little small congregation that day, and I was sitting in the front row. Only time I've, this ever happened to me. And we were in the middle of worship, and I knew the worship leader, and of course I knew the pastor and everybody. And all of a sudden, Yeshua stood 20 feet in front of me. Just stood there. And I didn't know what to say. Amazing, amazing experience. And then he disappeared. That afternoon, that spirit got cast out of me, and I got set free. I didn't know I had it. So let me ask you a question. You think you'd know if you had a spirit? Well, I'm going to tell you. You don't know. You don't know until somebody identifies it or it manifests itself and you see it. So what kind of spirits are there? Well, I've got a whole list of spirits here that Patricia and I deal with all the time. So I'm just going to go over just a few, little bit of it. It's all in this papers. And I'm, I want to send you these papers. So I'm not going to get all this stuff covered in this little short video. But so, some of the spirits that we deal with are spirits of fear, anxiety, depression, suicide, rejection, abuse. Abuse is a big one. You'd be amazed how many parents and grandparents and great-grandparents have been abused and it passes right down through the family. It can be cast out and gotten rid of. Shame, guilt, witchcraft, anger, violence. Another big one, pornography. You'd be amazed how many people are, people in the pulpit are looking at nasty stuff. 
you put that stuff in your head and you see it in a picture and it locks in you don't forget pictures everything you see you remember you don't put that stuff in your head lust religious spirit religious spirit that's a big one I have an adopted sister she and her husband they had a huge prison ministry and he kept telling her Joanne you got a daggum Baptist spirit she said I don't have a Baptist spirit a few years later, all of a sudden, it manifested itself, and they cast that thing out, and she got set free. Every religion has a spirit. I call denominations demon nations because they divide the body. So what, what do these demons do? They divide your spirit from your soul. That's what they do. They divide the body. They divide the arm from the leg from the... That's what they do. That's what they do. What's some more spirits? Unworthy, worthlessness, loneliness, inferiority, insuperiority, lying spirit. You know how many people have a problem with a lying spirit? I mean, I would talk to him all the time. And Papa says to me, well, that person has a lying spirit. We cast it out, and guess what? They don't lie so much. They get over it immediately. Well, hey, it tries to come back, but they have to keep praying. How about the spirit of addiction? Huge problem, addiction. Gambling alcohol gluttony wow don't talk about that one will people say I, I live for food why don't you live for Christ don't be living for food but you know what it's not your fault if you have a spirit of gluttony you need to be set free well your spirit has authority over your soul so David said King David in Psalms bless the Lord O my soul well how, what's that does that make any sense yeah it does because David was a spirit and you're a spirit, and I'm a spirit, and we're also a soul, and we're also a body. So David said to his spirit, David said to soul, David, bless the Lord, O my soul. Well, our spirit should have authority over our soul. Our soul is where we feel everything. We feel pain, and we feel pleasure. And we, we've been given a gift that's beyond imagination. Father gave us free will. We get to choose. But with that comes a huge responsibility. Because whatever we choose, we have to have there's a consequence for. And I'm not talking about everything bad. We do something good, there's a good consequence. We do something bad, there's a bad consequence. So a demon spirit gets into us and starts influencing us. Starts to influence us. We start making silly choices. I've made a lot of bad choices. I could tell you, you know, I used to go into the prisons and five or six guys would get saved every time I went in there. And the first thing I would say was, you know, the difference between you and me is you got caught and I didn't. I mean, I should have been in there. A lot of times I should have been in there. But I didn't, I didn't end up in there. I don't know why. I mean, I should have died a lot of times. One time a stupid me at 14 years old was in, at the Chesapeake Bay and me and my buddies said, let's swim across the bay. Seven miles, right? I got out a little bit and I started have, I cramped up. And if one of them hadn't grabbed me by the hair and drug me back to a sandbar, I'd have died. But what we didn't know was up in the middle of the channel, I'm, I'm talking about this was, what, this was 50 years ago. The ships used to throw all their garbage over the side and the sharks used to follow them in. We would have, we would have swam right in there to the shark channel. You know, so Father saved me. He gave me cramps. I got cramps. I mean, I, I mean I'm just amazed sometimes at how many times that the angels had to be working overtime just to keep me alive. See, but I walk into the jails and I say, look, I'm a piece of garbage. If, if Father could change me, what's he going to teach, change? What's he going to do for you? You know, whatever you've done in your life, if you're a witch or a warlock, this is just for you. And if you're a Muslim, this is just for you. I love the Muslims. They're tough. The witches and warlocks, they're tough. But they've been lied to. They've been said, once you join, and I'll take it back one step further. When I was a kid, I, I used to run, I was a courier for the mafia. I used to run bags of papers. I, I didn't know what they were then. They said, if you're in, you can't get out. Well, I never got into the mafia, so I didn't have to get out. I was just, I was just a courier. But Muslims are told, if you try to get out, we're going to kill you. But, but Satan, the adversary, tells witches and warlocks, you can never leave. You've made a decision. You can never leave. He's a liar. He's a liar. That's not unforgivable. I've had the opportunity to lead lots of witches to the cross. They become phenomenal Christians. You know what? When I go places to meetings and stuff, witches always gather around me because I cast out spirits, and they want the spirits. They're called these witches are called chalices, and they pick up the spirits and they think it makes them stronger. 
Well, why would you want a bunch of spirits in your body when some little punk like me can come along and say, in the name of Jesus, get out, and they have to leave? It doesn't make any sense. So if you're a witch or a warlock, some of this is for you. Those little spirits that you send out to people and to do things, they're so tiny. Let me, let, me, let me give you an analogy, okay? You've got a cute little chihuahua, and you're sitting at home with your family watching TV, and this 600-pound gorilla comes walking in the room. Where's he going to sit? He's going to sit wherever he wants to. The little dogs are going to go hide. Well, that's the way the adversary, that's the way the little demons are when the people that are empowered by Christ walk into a room. They can't, they can't hang out there because if you see them, you can cast them out. Now, understand this. They never die. You cast them out. They don't die. They go looking for someplace else to land. Or they want to come back, and if they come back, they come back seven times. So if you're a witch or a warlock, think about this. When I cast out a demon, I send it back. If it was sent, I send it back seven times. And I, in the spirit, I've seen people reeling on the floor when they've been attacked by that demon they sent that seven more times attacked them. So this is for real. And I want to go into a lot more of this, but I'm not going to try to take you too far. But I just want you to wake up and see. I want you to wake up and see. Two times I've seen spirits that I know were spirits. The first time, my, my friend Charlie Maney down in Radford, Virginia, he was a pastor. He owned a company called Brothers Three Log Homes down there. He wanted to buy this old, this old Toronado, big front, long front end thing with front wheel drive. So I picked him up at his house in Radford and drove him to Christiansburg. He picked it up. We're driving down the road going back to his house and the front wheel started doing this. And I said, oh my goodness, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna come apart. He's gonna wreck. And all of a sudden, an angel showed up. And he put his hand on the fender, he put one hand on the wheel, and floated right along beside that car for 10 or 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. But Charlie had to turn left into his driveway, and it was the right front wheel. I said, oh my goodness, all the weight's going to go on that wheel. He turned up the driveway, pulled up in the yard, the angel disappeared, and the whole wheel assembly fell off right in his front yard. Now, if you, if you can tell me there aren't any angels, I'll tell you you're nuts. I know better. Three o'clock one morning, Father got me up. I was living in Bassett Forks, Virginia. He said, I want you to go to Metazadan to this farm. And I knew the people at the farm. As a young couple, I had a couple of kids. Three o'clock in the morning, I pulled in about four. The lights are on in the house. There's another car in the driveway. I walk in. They said, what are you doing here? I said, God just sent me up here. And there's a guy sitting there. Nice looking guy, but he's dressed in a white robe. He said, he said we're glad you're here. God sent him. I said, that's wonderful. He said, you come here to hurt me. I said, no, 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 no. And I, it wasn't me. I didn't know what I was talking about. I said, no, not me. I, I came here to hurt who's in you. And it got real quiet. And, and they said, you don't understand. Well, he, he came from God. I said, wonderful. Say, I love you, Jesus. He wouldn't say it. Talked a little bit. I said, you're from God. He said, I'm, you, don't, you don't understand. I'm from God. I said, that's wonderful. I'm so excited. Say, I love you, Jesus. Well, the couples got angry with me, and they left the room, and I looked up at a candle, and there were demons, little demons, little teeny demons, three of them flying around that candle. And he looked at me, and he said, you can see them, can't you? And I said, yes, I can. He got up and left and disappeared. Are there spirits out there? Absolutely. I could tell you lots of stories, but I'm not going to get into that. But if you, if you have sickness in your body, you have a spirit of infirmity. So to, to think that you can be a Christian and not have spirits is an absolute lie from the pit of the dark place. So I want you to get set free. So I want you to pray this little prayer with me. I'm gonna pray it with you. And you gotta realize I'm a nothing nobody. I mean, I would be the last choice. If I were God, I would have been the last choice to choose to do anything, because I was a piece of garbage. So I want you to pray this little thing with me and realize I'm nothing. I'm speaking this to you and you're gonna pray this and we're gonna get rid of those spirits in the name of Yeshua, the name above all names. Yeshua, Jesus. So I want you to pray, I reject and I rebuke any spirit in me that does not bow down to Yeshua and Yahweh. I reject, I rebuke any spirit in me that does not bow, that does not bow down to, to Yeshua and Yahweh. Go! In the name of Yeshua. Drop me a note. Drop me an email. And on the subject line, put demons. And I'm going to send you all this stuff that I've got. And I'm going to get into this a lot deeper with those of you who send me a note. 
If you don't, hey, this is it. I'm not going to not going to take you down that road. But if you have an interest in that road, I promise you, you can be out there casting out devils, setting people free, getting people healthy. So send me a, send me an email with demons in the in the subject line to will at fymf.com. FYM stands FYMF stands for fulfill your master's I'm sorry, find your master's favor. Find your master's favor. F Y M F. Will at F Y M F dot com. I'm gonna tell you a secret. I love you. He loves you. He died for you. He gave his life just for you. So I want you to think about this. You're important. You have an important mission on this earth. You have a you have you have an assignment. And it's time to find it. So get in touch with me. I'll help you any way I can. God bless you.